Hey everyone, it's Tiger, and uh, today I want to tell you about my the day I joined the service, okay? Uh, for me, it was very eventful and really not in the best way. So I graduated from Davis County High in Owensboro, and two months later, I was set to leave. So we took about two days, and we went up to Louisville, which is where you get dropped off to join the, the Army at their in processing center and so we went up and you know i got to swim and we just we just relaxed and took our time and the the day came that around by five o'clock you needed to be signed into this hotel and that next morning they would get you on a flight to wherever you were going so you know, we finished up, and I don't really remember what we did, but we just didn't care. We just took our time, and I was going into the Army, you know, so uh, we just, we just didn't, me and my mother, we really enjoyed our time together. So we were going to the hotel. So I was driving that day, and my mother had a Buick Electra. It, it was a beautiful green car, beautiful green interior. Uh, I, I just remember that car because I just really liked it. And I'm driving it, and we're coming up to the exit, and I can see the hotel right there. Um, you know, had a hotel sign on it, of course. And I go to get off, and yes, you know, maybe I was going a little fast. You know, I was 17 at the time. So we're coming up to the turn lane, and all of a sudden, everybody in front of me starts locking up their, their, their brakes. You know, you see that all of a sudden, here's these brake lights, bam, bam, bam. I hit the brake lights, and you know, you don't have time to think when, when you're in panic mode. You just hit those brakes as hard as you can. The car pops up, you know, nose first, and Somehow, we did not hit the car in front of us. Bam! There was a Chevy Love, and that car, that truck, had plowed into us. At, I don't know, about 35 miles an hour. They weren't going that fast, but when you're going zero, it's still amplified. Um, knocked my glasses off, you know. Uh, I hit the steering wheel, I remember. Uh, or I hit, you know, hit the belt, and, you know, we got ourselves together. Um, you know, I didn't hit the car in front of us, so that was okay. But what had happened is some guy had decided he was smart enough to stop, literally stop on the freeway because he did not, he did not get over, and so he hit everybody else behind and made us all panic and hit the brakes. And unfortunately, this couple and at the time, you know, they they were in their they were 30, 35, and uh, they had a small child with them. I remember it was a little girl. Um and they hit us, I mean they slammed right into us and uh they, you know, it was their fault, you know, but it didn't matter because, you know, you just, your first thoughts, this little kid totaled, totaled their car so bad. Um, so we pulled over, and at that time, you know, every, you always had to wait for the police. And uh, they come, they, they take care of everything, and the car was drivable. So my mother took me on over to the hotel. I got checked in, and she drove back to Owensboro. She went home, and then she, you know, called the insurance and got it all set up. So at the time, and I, I don't quite remember, but there was a the length of time to file your claim in an accident was was longer than the current two years. And you know, my mother, you know, she was a good Christian woman, and you know, like a lot of people, she had her pride. And, you know, she didn't want to just file the claim for no reason. She wasn't out to, she wasn't out to get the system. So she 
you know, she went on about her business. You know, she worked at the nursing home. And then she had moved to Nashville. And she was there for a couple years. And somewhere around 1992, she moved back to Michigan. And I remember coming home from, I think from when I came home from Iraq, I came home to, you know, it was summertime. I came home for a month. And the term limit to claim, you know, to file a claim had just passed. And she did, you know, it was no big deal until one day she, she started having this pain back here. And, uh, you know, it, it, it slowly, it slowly got a little worse. It would affect her neck. You know, she had trouble sleeping. And then she got to where she had trouble wearing her uniform. So my mother always wear, wore the white dresses, right? She, she just, um, she just felt that's what she knew growing up. And that's what a, a nurse looked like was wearing white and she had the little white hat. She always wore that. But I remember being home one time and it was in the winter time. It was the worst. We were, she was living in Michigan in this trailer and she was just having so much trouble and she couldn't zip up the back. You know, I know it's hard for women to get that back zipper all the way up on a on a blouse or something. And so while I was home, you know, she would, hey, zip this up. So I would zip it up. And it was really hard because she couldn't file a claim. You know, it was it's just how it happened, you know. And there was there was absolutely no recourse for her at all. And at that point she decided that she would switch over to the scrubs and then, you know, you got the button downs and she always wore a button down. You know, my mom, my mother was a very neat woman. Uh, she believed in looking extremely professional at all times when she was working. 